G'day, g'day. Daniel O'Brien here from Chicken Caravan. Uh, today I'm talking with Bernard Phillips. How are you, Bernard? Oh, I'm well, thank you, Daniel. Uh, awesome. So I wanted to I wanted to chat with Bernard. He's he's down in Tassie. He's got a Chicken Caravan 30. And I wanted to um, yeah talk about sort of your experience today, Bernard, sort of having a Chicken Caravan 30 and having chicken. So first, you're in Tassie. Where in Tassie are you? Uh, we're in Coal Valley in Richmond, and um, it's a sort of gr- grape growing, um, irrigated farming land now. It used to be just dry land, but it's it's a product of prime uh, farming district. A lot of established farms and quite a few vineyards down here. Okay, and what's what size property are you on? I'm only on a well, sort of an oversized hobby block. I'm ten hectares, so okay. twenty five. And um, about half of it's clear and half of it's bush. Yeah, okay, cool. So you got a chicken caravan 30. How many chickens do you have at the moment? Um, currently running about half full, about 15. Yeah. Um, and a <laughs> big rooster. I keep the rooster for um, sort of um, as a sentinel sort of bird and he sort of keeps an eye on hawks and eagles and things. Yeah. So tell tell me about hawks and eagles. It's one of the things I heard that um, you did have some issues with eagles. Um, tell me sort of about that. Yeah, well, when I first got the chicken caravan, uh, we have we have uh, so probably about half cleared, half bush. We're on a reasonably like I've got a paddock that's not too sleep, steep, but then I've got a steeper block with a lovely view for the house and a bit of bush behind me, which is quite steep and. Uh, the paddock is obviously the better ground, and I put the caravan down there, and I didn't have no trees around it. I had a bit of a sh- extra shelter besides the caravan, uh, and I started off with um, two 50-metre fences uh, in a more of a square, and uh, uh, just you know, within a few days, I um, had lost a bird, lost a hen. I put thirty, I put twenty-eight, I think, hens in straight away. I was leaving room for a rooster, so I stopped short of the 30 and um, lost a hen the first day. A couple of days later, my wife came in and said, there's wallabies in the chook run. And I went down there with three eagles in the chook run. <laughs> anyway, right. it ter- turns out um, uh, I spoke to a local eagle expert and he said, well, it was May and the young chicks are just leaving the nests and the parents are showing them how to hunt and you put smallest board on. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So, so subsequently, um, he advised me to, um, you know, seek a bit more cover. Um, I brought the chickens back up closer to the house, a little bit more difficult uh, because a bit steeper. But um, also I spoke to your team, Daniel, and they advised. I did a bit of homework as well and found that a long, narrow, rectangular run was better than a square run. With a square run, the eagles get plenty of room to work whereas they don't like coming in between fences. The birds are big, you know, wedge-tailed eagles, yeah. two and a half metre wingspan, when I've got only three or four um, fence posts one way and then uh, a long, narrow run with a chicken caravan in the middle of it, the eagles um, don't get such a good access to corner of the chooks. So, yeah, I've, I have actually I've lost one since then, um, about the same time last year. Um, but generally, I've had no other issues since relocating them and uh, uh, also reconfiguring the fencing. Yeah, awesome. So what what made you decide to get chickens in the first place? Oh, I'm not a young man, but I've had uh, – my father had chickens when I was a kid. I live in the same sort of district as where I grew up now after having worked away for a while. And um, – uh, yeah, as a family, we've always been sort of with this sort of hobby farm sort of thing. We've always had chickens and and uh, they became, they wear the yard out. If you have chickens in the yard all the time, you know, they they just work the ground to nothing and uh, becomes a bit slushy in wintertime and, uh, yeah, basically never recovers. So I, I saw your concept. Um, I actually had heard of chicken caravans earlier. Um, Sort of mobile drag around hutches and things, um, and uh, I'd, I'd sort of considered that, and then saw yours with wheels on it, which was even better than skids. And um, yeah, I sort of started to um, just be attracted to the automation of it. 
Yeah, yeah, fantastic. So you said uh, you you used to sort of work away a bit. T- tell me a bit about your career and, y- and your background, Bernard. Um, well, I'm uh, sort of a, a large scale construction manager. So basically, worked on uh, building sites around around Australia, around the world. I'm um, pretty much Australia and Asia, actually. So um, very everything from theatres and shopping centres through to Sort of industrial food and beverage stuff. Um, I have worked on a couple of um, of uh, food processing places, including um, up in Thailand. I did a, a chicken hatchery, and uh, that was interesting. Just a big shed with a lot of incubators in it, but it was fun. To sort of see one hundred twenty five thousand chicks a day come out, yeah, and wow. <laughs> uh, also um, then that was linked to uh, growing sheds and. Um, uh, which were sort of contracted out. The, the food company was a big American company, um, Cargill, and um, yeah, they also had uh, chicken abattoir, and, and uh, we added on to the end of the abattoir a um, uh, snap freezer and um, processing plant. For, they, were, they were cooking chickens for, I think, McDonald's or KFC or both. Um, okay. And sending off chickens. And, <laughs> and it was very processed uh, driven. That was one of the things I also worked on deep basements in Singapore and you know Kuala Lumpur, Taiwan. So I've worked a few places in Melbourne, Sydney, Perth, Darwin, Wagga Wagga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did it. Did another. Uh, we a little bit of work in a cargo abattoir, like a beef abattoir at um, Wagga as well. So yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah right. So you've got so you you've got the chickens and so tell me about uh, like you're obviously growing your own food. You've got the eggs. Um, how satisfying is it to go out and collect your own eggs and eat your own eggs? Tell me about that. Oh uh, well, a lot of people you know I give a lot of eggs away. Um, I'm not commercial, um, but I do. Um, I have had um, thirty and more ch- chickens here at various times, and. Uh, it's very satisfying. Actually, I really enjoy, um, actually, believe it or not, especially if I haven't collected them for a day or two, I go out and get four dozen eggs. It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and they're all they're all clean, yeah. So I really take that point of, um, you know, the, the roll-away uh, nesting box because uh, uh, when you go out there and, and in, the, in the past when we used to have the chooks and um, it would be raining and muddy and they have muddy feet and all the eggs would be filthy, um, that's a bygone era now, <laughs> and uh, and now um, it's very satisfying. It's we we grow a lot of um, sort of green vegetables, winter vegetables, um, berry, r- raspberries, and um, um, oh, walnut tree. You know, it's it's satisfying for each of the things you do. It's not necessarily uh, about saving money because you know when you've got one or two apricot trees, your possums and your cockatoos get most of them, but yeah. um, uh, it is satisfying, particularly uh, well, our eggs are highly regarded by my extended family. Um, and, uh, you know, just the, the grass that goes into the egg production gives them a fantastic coloured yolk and um, they really, I've got good, good young chooks and uh, they, they, they come up pretty well. So, so yep. with, your, with your background of chickens, you've had chickens in a stationary yard and you're saying how they just they turn it to dirt or sometimes mud and you've got it now you've got a chicken caravan 30 that you can move around yep. for, for someone that's never had a stationary yard and a stationary chicken coop can you just talk about the differences of of the advantage of having a mobile shed you've sort of covered it but some people might not have ever had a stationary coop so it's like well why not just lock them up and just put them in one spot oh well there's a lot of problems actually um that you don't even sort of notice when you only have stationary chook shed but there's things like lice there's things um where you know the sparrows and and, and blackbirds and so on come in and get into your chook shed um up through the eaves and so on. Um, they bring little little pests that you have to keep dealing with with the chooks, which is still still present but much less prevalent uh, when the chooks are being moved around. I think the um, uh, we don't have foxes here, so so um, uh, there's not such a problem with foxes. We do have quolls, we do have Tassie devils, um, and we do have feral cats. Um, 
And so everything that's stationary becomes a target, um, more so rats uh, become more of a problem in chook sheds. Uh, and uh, so you can eliminate a lot of the pests and sort of threats to your chooks um, and also a lot of work because um, you you don't collect all the all the poo in one spot. You don't have to deal with quite so much uh, uh, work because the chook spread it all around uh, your paddock. <laughs> and um, what else? Um, yeah, when I fenced them in, uh, yeah, pretty much they're open all the time. We've we've got a yard where I when I'm growing chickens, I still use the old chook yard to grow out my uh, pullets and so on. But um, uh, I don't have to leave them there indefinitely. And then now at the moment, if I went out to my chook yard, well, I don't have any pullets and the grass is about a foot long and I'm getting ready for springtime and I'm getting a few more uh, day-old chicks in October and I'll grow them out. So I, th- I think there's, um, there's a usefulness in having yards. But um, uh, since I've had the caravan, um, I've actually at some stages combined the yard and the caravan. So I've actually put the caravan just outside the yard and run a little tunnel through so the chooks can get can still go and, and camp in the van and come in a bit closer to the garden so my wife can throw scraps to them more easily. So, yeah, yeah we basically, uh, we're sort of not, not hybridised. I'm, I'm 95% chicken caravan and, and 5% fixed yards. Um, but we use the, like if i got a sick chook or something, I'll take it out, put it in the old hen house and just sort of watch it for a day or two whether I have to um, deal with it or, or um, it recovers. You know, sometimes they get knocked by the rooster or maybe uh, some other issue. But um, uh, generally the health of the, of the chicken, since I've had the chicken caravan, uh, I've had, had uh, virtually, apart from the um, predator losses, I've had uh, virtually no issues at all with the health of the chickens. Yeah. Yeah, and I think one of the things when we find that you get an animal and you keep the animal moving, there's a lot less issues than if you have it in one spot. And whether that's chickens or sheep or cattle or whatever, keep them moving. And we've found, yeah, a lot of the, those issues just uh, just aren't there. Yeah, and I think the ventilation. Um, the, the I was surprised without insulation here, and it gets pretty cold. Um, that um, without insulation, how how cold it might be in the in the chicken caravan at night, and uh, no, I've actually uh, seen the chickens hold on pretty well, even very cold nights, and um, the, that's why I think um, it's probably better to have not just a few chickens in the caravan, um, and I think uh, I'm probably at about half full. I'm probably at the lower bound of what I'd have. I was pretty happy to see them packed in and pack themselves in at night um, just to keep ev- everything warm, but. Um, yeah, basically, I'm running about half full at the moment. I've got a fairly large rooster in there, French Marin rooster and Highline hens. Yeah, great. So, finally, what would you say to someone like that? They might have just bought sort of 10 acres like you. They're going, should we get chicken? Should we get a chicken caravan? Like, what would you say be some advice to someone who's sort of get it, getting started or considering getting started with chickens? Um, well, I think um, I really like the caravan uh, from the autonomy of it, the, the uh, auto opening nest boxes, keeping the eggs clean, the auto opening doors, allowing uh, security at night. Um, the, the chooks do put themselves away very well. Um, the, uh, following Daniel's little guidelines about making sure the chooks uh, roost in there in the first few nights um, uh, has been good. But, uh, yeah, I think... Um, when you think about, like, like, I think I don't know what your current prices are, but, but four years ago I paid about four grand for a CC thirty, and um, if you build a chook shed from scratch, it's going to cost you that or more. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, you may as well go mobile and stay clean and uh, and have the benefit around uh, around the area um, of the uh, of the chooks um, and. Uh, the chooks do like having a tree or having something to hide under for the overhead predators, but um, I'm, I've managed to uh, – I've had a few wind issues and, and so on, and um, uh, only on extreme nights will I go and drive a star picket in and tie off the caravan. I haven't ever had any problems with it. So um, basically I'd 
But yes, if I had um, say my son or my daughter was doing the same thing, I definitely recommend that they just go straight to a caravan. Don't worry about building the chooks yet. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Well, it's been really good talking with you, Bernard, and and hopefully that can really inspire others and give them the information that they need to sort of move forward. So thanks so much for your time. No worries, Daniel. Good on you.